This time on the show, Linux authentication with a YubiKey. We're talking one-time passwords and two-factor authentication for SSH. Plus, free SSHFS clients for Windows, relay proxies without exposing ports, and known host editing tips. All that and more this time on Hack5. This segment of Hack5 is brought to you by IdeaPaint. Hello and welcome to Hack5. My name is Darren Kitchen. And I'm Shenanigans. And this is the show where we re-engineer everything because it wasn't broken. Yeah, that seems to happen a lot whenever you do the show Hack 5. Actually, about once a year, you know? Yeah, pretty much. Either we're doing it in a dining room, doing the show in a dining room, or a kitchen, or... A garage. The garage. When I do the show in the kitchen, it gets recursive, like GNU. You know, yeah. Remember that one when I was, like, chewing on popcorn behind you? <laughs> I was like, what? There's, there's no point to WTF. it all. WTF! What did, no point I don't to know. Hack 5. And, but what we're talking about here, and we'll have to get a B-roll shot of this, is we have... Definitely re-engineered the whole studio and gone back to a live-to-tape setup instead of recording ISOs. I know that's not why you tuned in, but we're just kind of giving you an FYI why things might seem a little weird because we're doing happy, fun, switchy stuff, and Paul's over yeah. there in the corner with a board of lights. We buttons. do it live, sir. And this is going to give us a whole lot of new opportunities with live. So we have to figure this out, and that means that we fly by the seat of our pants with our hair on fire, and we... Yeah. <laughs> I'm just imagining now the seat with the fire and the pants mm, in the lighting sky. Lighting my hair on fire. All right. That could be good times. Let's do some techno lusty stuff. Yeah, let's do it. Yes. So, so what's going on this episode? Well, as you know, we have been talking SSH lately in the context of proxies, and yes. uh, we talked a little bit about security, and we went into um, uh, what was it called? Um, public key authentication. Mm -hmm. Yep. We talked about using proxies to do some little bouncing around stuff and yes. forwarding local and remote and things like that. Um, we're actually going a step back to password-based authentication, but then making it even cooler with one-time passwords, two-factor, ah, and good yeah. stuff. Uh, we talked Love briefly about how I use um, a YubiKey mm -hmm. to log into the Hack5 WordPress right, yeah. and a couple of other things. And I really love it because you know it's just easy, it's secure. And we're going to do the same thing here for our SSH server in Linux. Awesome. OK. Yes. So I figured that uh, we should go ahead and just start off by talking about like a quick recap of uh, some of the things that we've covered before as far as SSH auth is concerned. And as you remember, there are four different modes of authentication mm -hmm. in SSH. There's password, which we started with. Right. There's public key. Which is very secure. Yes. And then there's also uh, keyboard interactive. Mm -hmm. Which we didn't really touch on. You know, the thing about keyboard interactive is it's mostly used for one-time passwords, except mm -hmm. in this case, we're actually going to be using password authentication for one-time password. And we'll get to how okay. that's all going to work here in just a second. The last one being GSS API. That's standing for Generic Security Services, uh -huh. and it's just how you can like implement Kerberos or NTLM or yeah. crap like that. Um, we're going back to talking about password authentication because we're going to be tying it in with a module that will allow us to use our YubiKey. Okay. And so to understand password-based authentication again, we need to realize that at least on the Unix side of the world, what, we, what we're talking about when we say that is we're talking about PAM. That's the chick from The Office, right? Yes, the this chick from sense. The Office is actually responsible for authenticating users in Linux. She is an excellent Office administrator. Yes. Well, PAM <laughs> stands for pluggable. Like plugging in? Uh, kind of. Pluggable <laughs> is in like modular. Oh, ah, OK. Uh, authentication module. And this is really the, the default that you're going to find in Unix-like operating systems. So you're your um, Linuxes of the world and all the variants mm -hmm. and stuff are going to use PAM to do authentication. Okay. And so this came about uh, back in the day in response to an RFC or a request for comment by the, um, by the Open Source Foundation. They were like, hey, guys, let's talk about the way that we can make Linux more happy and open and stuff. Sounds and like it happened a long time ago. Well, in a galaxy far, far away, Sun Microsystems was all like, hey, oh, guys, gosh. check out PAM. And wow. then Oracle came by and was like, rawr, and then open source <laughs> lawsuits. And, but that happened later. So um, 
The idea is, with this, though, is that PAM is a modular system for handling authentication. It's kind of like an API, just like GSS API uh -huh. allows you to integrate things like um, Active Directory into SSH authentication. Okay. Well, PAM allows you to integrate lots of different kinds of authentication modes into Linux, or, well, I'm going to say Linux over and over, and I really mean Unix-like operating systems. Um, GSS API actually does Kerberos. I'm just going to write Kirby because she's all <laughs> like, <laughs> yay, meow. But um, <laughs> and that's probably the only caveat that I'm going to go into. It's a rat hole, but uh, you're not going to find Kerberos in Pam. You kind of can. It's a different story. Okay. okay. The point <laughs> being, this is uh, basically what you use to log into your modern Linux systems, mm -hmm. and there are four modules that go into Pam. Okay. And so the first module is account. And this is like my Windows sign-on account, except for Linux. Yeah, on Windows you've got the Sam. On Linux we get the Pam. We have the Pam. Oh, dude, so nice. if, like if Pam met Sam, and then Aww. they were all like, oh, and they fell in love, and they used, Cur and then they got a Kerberos, and then anyway, we could like oh totally just machine them later. <laughs> um, but yeah, the account module uh -huh. of Pam is really just saying, okay, uh, who are you? Uh, do you have access to be? Do, are you allowed to even be accessing this system? So it's okay. responsible for. You know, just checking out that user. Right. Right. Second part of this is actually the authentication. And the authentication is what, you know, verifies the identity mm -hmm. of that account and says, hey, it's typically using a password and saying, hey, what's your password? Is that what I have on file? Is everything yeah. all good? Okay. Right. Well, the way that it actually manages those passwords in this case is an aptly named password module. So that's a password manager? Not the, not the same as the authentication. Yeah, module. authentication uses part of this to authenticate this guy over here. Ah, right? okay. And so it's this is as we've seen as we kind of dissect more and more of these. Just like SSH has these different authentication yes. types, it has those three different channel types. Um, we notice that there's a lot of modularity in when you design a protocol, mm -hmm. uh, and that's all done for security sake and okay. you know, for lots of other reasons that are outside the scope of this discussion. But suffice it to say, uh, these are the first three of the four modules in PAM. Okay. Uh, the password one is really cool because this, uh, you, like, okay, authentication handles checking the password from the account, mm -hmm. right? What's password? Well, that actually manages the password. It is, like you said, a password manager. Yeah. And uh, let's just go ahead and take a little diversion here into the fun world of slash etc slash pass wd. PWD. Yeah. Well, PWD prints the working directory. Pass wd is <laughs> the password, and people say Unix isn't password easy. Password working directory? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Actually, you are right in that PWD is a Python um, password module, but that's a totally different story. We're getting really sidetracked here. Basically, the reason that I bring this up is because Pam, as it's responsible for the passwords, mm -hmm. is going to use this database file that you find on a, a typical Unix system okay. that lives in this directory called Etsy, and the file is called passwd. Mm -hmm. It's just a text file. Okay. Right? And uh, what it contains, and I'll just use my system as an example. So my system at home is going to say Darren. It's going to have a line that says Darren, and that's my username. And then there will be a colon. And so each of these different values are delimited by colons. Okay. The next thing is going to be an X, and we'll come back to that in just a second. Okay. The next thing is going to be a number. And in, this, in my case, it's actually 1,000. Right. What is that number? That number is the user ID number. Okay. So remember how um, we talked about how in Unix there are the uh, there's the user, there's the group, mm -hmm. yeah, and then there's the overworld. Ah, so this is the ID number for your user. Yes, just that's, that section. That's my user ID number, right? Okay. I also have a group ID number, and in this case, it's also one thousand. This is my primary group ID. Well, because I am the master of my own group. Ah. Mind you, I can also belong to other groups. This is my primary group, just like okay. Paul and you and I could all be a member of the Hack Five group. Okay. You know, and then we could have. So that would like, be something like one thousand one or yeah, it, something they, like that. Yeah, they're anywhere between zero number. and thirty-two thousand something. Oh, okay. And there's a fun trivia thing about that in sixteen-bit integers, but we're not going to get into <laughs> that. Um, the the next thing is actually going to be the uh, geckos. Oh, geckos yeah. inside your computer. Uh, Dude, 
Why wouldn't there be geckos yeah, in your Why computer? not? They're uh, cute. Great. This is they protect your passwords. <laughs> this is typically with their little hands. Yeah, yeah, as they do. <laughs> That's what geckos do. I'm just imagining little. <laughs> Woo! Let's anyway. Um, the geckos <laughs> is actually an acronym. Okay. For um, for general comprehensive open uh, or sorry general comprehensive operating system. And oh, okay. This really dates back to like I mean you, we're talking Unix here. Linux is Unix. This Unix is like goes old back school. to Bell Labs in the 60s. Oh my god. And computers are the size of your refrigerator <laughs> plus your mother plus your house and your car and everything else. Anyway. Okay. Um, so the reason I bring that up is because this here, it's a fun little trivia fact, but uh, back in the day Bell Labs used this uh, area here to handle like print spooling and stuff like that. We now know it as geckos and what it typically contains is a bunch of comma delimited uh, information. Typically you're going to find it's going to be like first and last name, the building and room number that you're in. Really? We're, we're all in a complex wow. here. Um, as well as your office telephone number and other for your, you know, your oh, pager. That's, that's amazing. Yes. So that's our geckos. Um, I actually leave this blank all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't like to fill it in. Mine will just say comma, 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 chameleon. And then the chameleon and the gecko hang out with Sam and Pam, and then it's just a good day. <laughs> um, uh. And then uh, there's also your home directory. In my case, it's slash home slash Darren. Uh -huh. We'll just say DK. And then finally, the last thing is what your um, what the first program is that runs when you log in. Now I say that instead of saying shell because this could be anything. Oh but, really? Well, if I wanted a user as soon as they log in to so get like a like, VNC session back to Yeah, this could be like a, VNC or anything like that. Yeah, which would be huh. great for making like a dummy terminal. Yeah. Mine it's slash bin slash bash because okay. I'm a bash user. Um, mm -hmm. You could use TCL, C shell, any of those others. But this right here, you're just going to find line after line after line of these guys. Um, and it's gonna, and you can only edit this if you're you, uh, root. And okay. I would recommend if you are going to edit it, use um, what is it? Uh, PWDVI, I think. P P W V I. Anyway, I'll have to look that Something one up. Like There's that. a special VI program just for editing this because okay. you really don't want to f it up. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, this file here, remember we were talking about user, group, and world, Yes. it needs to be readable by all of those guys. So remember when we were talking about like file That's permissions? That's not very safe, Well, right? kind of. It, like back in the, like in the 80s and early, early 90s, not so much when your file's properties is like um, r dash dash r dash dash r dash dash, <laughs> meaning yeah. readable by the world, the, um, the user, user the and group. the group, not yeah. necessarily in that order. Well. So for that reason, we have X. And what that refers to. So an X me means no, you can't read. No, yeah, or an asterisk <laughs> sometimes to disable the user. Oh. But this refers to a file that you're typically going to find on Unix systems past 1992. I think it was like 1989 or 86 when it was originally developed. But basically, as far as the Linux world is concerned, 92 and on it became popular. And you're, you're never going to find a system now okay. that doesn't use this, practically speaking. We could boot up a VM just to fire up John the Ripper and show you <laughs> why we do this. Um, that X right here refers you to a file in slash etc called shadow. Because before this X, what you would have typically found in here would be a hash value for the password. And what's but wrong with that? It's, it's not salted or anything? No, it's not at all salted. And really? Yeah, and wow. so we're talking about you know an algorithm like SHA. That's awesome. One. Like if you've got an SHA one uh -huh. based uh, salt up in there, or sorry, uh, hash of your password up in there, mm -hmm. and anyone can read this. All the if you go back to text. So files, I could just get onto your Linux box, sign in as any user, and then check out this file in the system because I can read it as mm -hmm. any user and find all of your information, all your passwords. Well, you'd find. The hashes for them, but then you could run them through like John the Ripper, because they aren't solved. Which is a brute forcing program, and yeah, and that's actually if you go back to like the, uh, the text files of the of the late '80s and early '90s on textfiles.org, you're going to find a bunch of oh ones that, that say <laughs> log in as guest and download the slash etsy slash passwd file and run through John <laughs> Ripper hilarious. and then break into the system. All right. So that's why we have this because what you're going to find in here is uh, your user ID. Mm -hmm. And then some other stuff, and basically the the gist of it is 
least on mine, I use this thing called $6, which is a SH, ah, Shaw, in my case, 512. And it's everything's encrypted in this. Okay. So this is a encrypted equivalent here. And this has different permissions than this readable by everyone password file there. OK. OK. So that was, I know. So this talks to that, that talks to that. Yep. Cool. That's the idea. Got it. And so, so Pam will use this database here to manage the password and then, so, you know, uh, changing the password and stuff like that. Nice. So uh, those are the first three. The last, of course, remember we're talking about pluggable authentication module here. The last part of that is session. And so this module in PAM is really just uh, responsible for managing sessions. So hey, are you logged in? Did you time out? Things oh, like yeah. that. OK. You ever run a sudo command? Like yes. Sudo update install something, uh -huh. right? And then you do, and then it'll ask you for the password, right? Yeah. And then later you're all like, oh, I want to image this. So like sudo dd, this thing to that thing. It doesn't thing. ask for your password again because you're already in there. Yeah, it's memory. Well, this is, you know, this is the part of that that is going to maintain your session and say, hey, ah. if you haven't used, like, say, for example, sudo, or yes. you're logging in, you know, it's saying, hey, after 10 minutes, mm -hmm. or if you open a new terminal window, it's a different session, things oh, like okay. that. OK, cool. Um, so the reason that I bring up all of this stuff about PAM is because what we're going to be doing is adding a module to PAM that's going to allow us to do a little bit of one time Passwords. Yay. This sounds logically similar to my Google authentication app, which That's uses a one-time password every time. That is a perfect practical example or an implementation of that. Uh, another being you know, the YubiKey the Yuba yeah. uh, from Yubico. And we've actually RSA had Dina on here. Yeah. RSA tokens, if you know. I have one of those, throw it away because that, that's I have been one. hacked. It's a keychain. <laughs> really? <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, that's that's the idea is that if you've ever used any of those, like the Google Authenticator app is a great example of one because it's mm -hmm. time based. And so okay. I guess I should bring up that the, what these are versus your regular password is your regular password is static. And these are dynamic. Mm -hmm. Meaning that every time you go ahead and run your, you know, your application or you use your token or whatever it may be. It changes it, every time. It changes every time, yeah. right. And it works on, the whole principle of this is based on random, you know. Uh, who doesn't like? Well, I hope it's random. <laughs> well, who doesn't love random numbers? And yeah. so there's a bunch of different ways to come up with random numbers that both the server that's authenticating you over here, as well as you, are going to be able to come up with something that you can negotiate and everybody's going to agree upon, right? Okay. Um, there's a, a couple of ways. You, you mentioned the Google Authenticator. Uh -huh. When you open that app, it's got like a little pie chart thing yeah. that goes around. Yeah. And so you've got 60 seconds or something like that to yeah. type in this password. Well, that is an example of one that is time sync. So um, in this oh. case, a time sync is your application on your phone mm -hmm. is in absolute sync with the uh, Google Authenticator on the back end, which uses Epoch Unix time. It's another tangent <laughs> we can get into. But, but basically, the time in seconds since some arbitrary date in the 60s okay. has been incrementing. And so they both know that. And then using the time as well as a formula, they're able to come up with a value. Uh -huh. That's the oversimplification of this. Uh, the other thing that you could do is use a, a previous password method. So a previous password method would look something like this. If the first time I plugged in my, uh, my YubiKey uh, and it said 0, 0, 0, 001, mm -hmm. the next time I plugged it in and it said 0, 0, 0, 002, you mm -hmm. might imagine what the next password might be. Oh, I don't know. 0003? Probably. And if you got enough of that these, you can figure it out. Well, in this case, we're talking about a uh, the algorithm would look like this. And I'm not talking about Google. Oh, here. yeah, plus one. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But um, this would be an example of of a uh, an algorithm. Now mm -hmm. obviously you would use something a little bit more complex than plus one. You'd right. like you know, <laughs> no, multiply you'd be like multiplied by the love for your mother and a bunch of other stuff, and then <laughs> you know you'd get that. Okay. Of course, if you were able to get enough of these, you might be able to reverse it 
True. But uh, that, that right would there. would be utterly complicated. Yes, and that right there is previous pass. Okay. Um, if, if you've got somebody that's collecting enough of those, you've got bigger problems, yeah. actually. <laughs> and then the last one would be a challenge in response. And that would be like what? Um, I'm thinking like WPA. So when you. Oh, yeah. When you authenticate with WPA, and we could do a whole Wi Fi series with a whiteboard, that'd be fun. Uh, there's a four way handshake involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And nobody actually gives up what the password is and plain yeah. text or anything like that. It's a bunch of math. And so that's our fun math. <laughs> so this is you all using that good stuff, right? Okay, cool. Uh, those are a couple of the different methods that you're going to find to create randomness for one time passwords. And really, when we talk about one time passwords, you know, we should keep in mind that a lot of times, all of the things that we're seeing in here, mm -hmm. like, you know, you mentioned the RSA, uh, Secure ID Tokens, Google Authenticator, your YubiKey, uh, those are all single aspects of a greater two-factor authentication system. So, here we go. I have no markers anymore. So, two-factor auth. And so two-factor authentication is basically defined as something that, ta that uses two or more mm -hmm. of three factors of authentication. Now, those three are, first of something all. You have, mm -hmm. Something yep. you have. Something you are. Something you have. Sure, something and you are. And have could be something like your, your YubiKey. And something you know. Yes, exactly. So my YubiKey is something I have. No is the password that you have in your head or whatever. Right. In my case, it's one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> and in your case, it's game, right? <laughs> yes. Well, Which it kind we of is. Just, we all just <laughs> lost that. Um, and then R is, like you said, something you are. And so that's me. Oh, or so like biometric um, authentication. Yeah. Like so like one of these, I'm doing a horrible fingerprint or, or one of... <laughs> these and you're all like ah oh, i've been out all night drinking and i'm <laughs> angry <laughs> anyway <laughs> so um anyway you you can actually already think of an example of one of these that you currently use probably all the time mm -hmm. and that is a big fat your uh, atm debit card oh you're right it's something you have and something you know, yeah, your you, pin. You've got the plastic card and yeah. you know the pin number, yeah. which in your case is one, two, three, four, right? Of course. Of course. <laughs> and so now that we've kind of gotten into that and talked about some of the different practical implementations, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can implement the YubiKey into your yes. SSH daemon on your Linux box and uh, by just adding a PAM module. And it's going to be so much fun. Uh, so stay tuned, we're going to get into that here in just a bit, right after a quick break. Idea Paint transforms virtually anything you can paint into a high performance dry erase service that erases cleanly every time, just like our very own Hack 5 table right here, look it's the cloud! And get this, with Idea Paint you're empowered just like we are to collaborate, to interact and to fully explore your creativity and in our case our technical wit at that. So no matter where you use Idea Paint, big ideas are sure to follow and it's one of the most flexible, durable and cost effective dry erase solutions on the market. So go ahead and head over to ideapaint.com hack5 and learn more.